All right, just just read the first thing there. Oh, oh, James, don't make me say hella. Yeah, it is pretty cringe, to be honest with you. Just about, but go ahead, Epic Tabletop Movies. Oh, hella. Hella. <laughs> <laughs> epic Tabletop Moments thread. <laughs> Running a Digimon game. Players are caught in a three-way fight between themselves, a royal knight, and a demon lord. One of the humans has been grabbed by the demon lord, and the royal knight doesn't really give a shit if he gets hurt. The Digimon partner is hanging off the Demon Lord's arm, Shadow of the Colossus style. Royal Knight attacks with a wave of energy. Partner leaps off the tanket. Digivolves into perfect slash ultimate. Players ask if he can try to cut through the attack with a sword. Raw no. But I say f*** it, that sounds cool as shit, and tell him to roll an attack. Literally just meets the number of successes the enemy does. He gets to cut the attack away. It was sick as f***. And a lesson on why you should be flexible as a GM and use rule zero as much as possible. People who only play raw will never get the experience Ooh. like this. I don't know. I I, th- I still think there's a bit of a stigma when it comes to like anime tabletop games. Yeah. Like some like the stories I hear from them are really cool, but anime do. I know. <laughs> I can already hear the weaves in the corner going. <laughs> Anime's not that bad, but no, let's it's be not. serious, it's, it's kind of cringe at times. Playing as one of two players in a GURPS magic game. We're both really high powered. Trying to make our way to the top of a god's tower. Finally reach the final floor. In anticipation of a final boss, I start charging up a missile spell. Go to edge of huge canyon at the edge of the room, and a huge demon begins to fly up. Both start yeeting spells and shit at it. Let go of missile spell I'd been charging for a while past maximum. Critical hit. Aimed for the head. Deal 120 damage in a single hit. Nice. Oof. <laughs> the GM knew just how powerful we were, and it was a fucking amazing fight otherwise. The other player fought the demon thing mano el mano, as I kinda just dealt with the minions. But that was one of my favourite sessions I might have ever played. It's always nice when you get stuff like that, you yeah. know, like see that big dirty head, like, you know, that ungodly dirty head, like you, Oof. you just start emptying dice, yeah. you know what I mean, you just empty the bag on the table and say, like, what did I get to? <laughs> <laughs> One day, I think I will play GURPS eventually, you should see the boys on TG, they're constantly going on like, stop playing d d 5th edition, play GURPS, it's the best GURPS. system ever, and apparently it is a very good system, yeah. it's just I've never met anyone I've that never actually, met anybody who actually, actually plays, plays it. it, and I would really like to play it. But um, sadly, like everyone plays fifth edition, mm-hmm. so if they either fifth edition or Pathfinder, that's or what Knight. we're stuck with. If anyone does have any garb schemes, let us know. Let, let us know in the comments. I wouldn't say no. Playing a gunslinger using a martial strife, magic martial art, kind of like an exalted, to let me shoot stuff better. Pantheon mates are a dragon and an assassin. This is our second session, and the GM spent the first talking about how he needed to let us level up in that one because his encounter in the second session was so hard. Even though the first session was basically just character creation. We are tracking a group of bandits that butchered a village. The assassin discovered that we are being followed by an old monk who was using powerful martial art techniques to keep himself hidden. Whatever, dot jpeg. (laughs) We stop and talk to him. Monk thinks that we killed everyone in the village, even though all we did was bury the bodies and scavenge some rations and water for travelling roll diplomacy to tell him we didn't kill anyone and we're tracking the real killers. GM didn't think that would actually try talking to the monk and he doesn't have a good reason to disbelieve us. Monk travels with us. We get to the bandits lair. Bandits have a small army. A 40 hit dice golem. Ooh. That's a lot. Yeah, that's pretty bad, right? For context, there are angels with fewer hit dice and the bandit leader. Assassin sneaks in and kills the entire army without being noticed because he's just that good. Golem has a way too many hit dice for us to handle, but my new monk friend has insane damage output and kicks its ass single-handedly. Bandit leader runs like a bitch and that's why stopping and talking people tends to work in your favour. Yeah, I always get that quite a bit, like, you know, with boys, like, you know, the first response is like, like let's just kill it. Know, you know what fuck. I mean? It's, um, I think, Lindy Beach. Talk to them <laughs> and then them kill it if they're dead. <laughs> however, however, it does kind of sound like they've just invited a DM player character to join them yeah. at the same time. It's yeah. kind of like, mm, is this an example of a DM player character done correctly, maybe? Well, because, well, because he was never intended to be a DM player character. Yeah. Um, that's actually, yeah, what do you guys think? It's an it's an unusual one, it's a bit different. 
But let us know. I don't know what to make of that one. Yeah, neither um, do I. Playing Savage Worlds. 1920s game with supernatural stuff happening in it. Less Lovecraft and more urban fantasy. Party gets sent back in time to Greece. Pompeii specifically. I don't want to go <laughs> Well, a... oh, it's 1920s Pompeii? Well, that's fine. No, I think the game is set in the 1920s. But then from the time thing, they've actually been sent back in time Ooh, to no. ancient Pompeii. <laughs> no. I think that's what they're on about. Forgive me if we're wrong in the I comments. Don't know. Let's just keep going. Magic item that sent us back tells us we need to figure out what we need to do before the volcano erupts tomorrow. So it is back in time. Uh, Ooh, uh, that shit. Everyone rolls a D100 to randomly determine what role in society we've been randomly assigned by the magic item. Oh, who's going to get, um, like, love boy? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> He's going to so, get love boy. Someone's going to be the love boy. <laughs> I'm an aristocrat. Everyone else is some form of plebeian. We quickly discover that the thing we need to solve is a convoluted case of marriage. A young man loves a girl and wants to marry her but her hand has already been promised to an older man with more money. We investigate the older man and learn that he's an evil sorcerer and a strong one at that. I don't know why, but I just got the mental image of Jafar from Aladdin, <laughs> even though it doesn't fit the set no, at all, doesn't. but I really just think of Jafar. But his riches are fake through illusions and he doesn't really have the money to pay the bride price. Party discusses what we should do about this. The sorcerer looks powerful and we're not sure if we can take him. Light bulb. Ask GM how much money my character has in this time period. GM rolls a die and sighs. I'm fucking loaded. Hey. Head back into town and take the young man out drinking. Easy social roll gets him to spill his guts to me about his feelings for the girl. Act as a drunken but benevolent patron and offer to give him more money than the sorcerer offered. Young man accepts. Hand him a big sack of Greek coins. I'm not coming back to this time period, so might as well do something nice with it. Kid runs off and gets married. We return to the present alive. Money is the best superpower. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a full easy game. Oh, that's sweet. That, I like that though. The DM awesome. just like, oh my god, oh, you just shit. ruined it for I, me. Oh my god, I <laughs> didn't. Th awesome. I didn't think this through at all, did I? Oh. <laughs> no, it's nice whenever that happens. I think I, I've had that once in a one shot where we go for the <laughs> one money. shot the last twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah. No, we we go for money, so we did, and it turned out. That he give us like over like a thousand credits each, and the health potions were twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, well, load up now then, I suppose. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just want to talk to you about our new affiliate, Reroll. Reroll is a D and D fifth edition character builder app. Now everyone needs a character sheet up for a tabletop game, but what makes Reroll stand out above all the rest is its character art. I personally find the character art really, really cool. It has this beautiful retro pixel art aesthetic and they are continually adding new races and items so you can customise it whatever way you want. They currently have 14 supported races, over 150 weapons and over 400 pieces of armour you can mix and match from to really make your character come to life. And the best part, you can have your own little cute companion, like a little baby penguin, a flying kitty, a stupid looking pug, or my personal favourite, a little corgi. And the best thing about Reroll, it has a free version with limited character art, so you can try before you buy and see if you like it or not. We personally think it's an amazing app that will just improve your overall enjoyment of tabletop role playing games. Reroll is on Apple, Android, desktop, and if you use our coupon code NECKBEARDIA at checkout, you get 10% off. It's a great affiliate that we think you guys will love. But enough of that. Let's get back to the video. Roll to persuade a local lord to add more of a reward to your quest. Roll a natural fucking 20. 20. <laughs> Whoa. Ah. Can you imagine actually getting a, imagine actually hitting a 20? Never. Oh my oh god. Oh god, that never happens. Ever. <laughs> the rest of the party begins to hoot and scream, scaring the GM's <laughs> mom. Scream that I instantly become king of the land. Start loudly describing how I bang the princess. <laughs> GM tries to story shit me, saying bullshit like, this land isn't even a kingdom, and it's just a one out of 20 chance, calm down. Entire table screams at him until he admits that my natural fucking 20 means that I am the king. <laughs> 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 Why is it so cute though? Like, seriously? Game is now about my reign as king. 
with all the other members as my court. My face when this happens every 20 or so rows. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. Look, honestly, I, for me, I think I'm kind of sick of the idea, and I really prefer the idea you can't get criticals in skill checks. Yeah. Um, I kind of prefer that at this yeah. stage. Um, be honest with you, you know what? But I suppose everyone kind of enjoys the idea that if you get a 1, you embarrass yourself, and if you get a 20, you get to break the laws of physics. Yeah. And I kind of like that. It's yeah. It's kind of fun sometimes, but you know. Maybe I'm just sick of the stories of then I go to 20 and then I go to, go to fucking one! You know what I mean? It's like, oh, come on, guys, please stop at this stage. Like, it's, I know it's fun and all from time to time, but like. Stop it, calm down. Come on, can we, can we please? The meme's been going for a bit long now, and do you want to. Can we all just agree to dial this shit back a wee touch? You know what I mean? In keeping with the Godbound stories, I was playing as a Godbound of alacrity, sword, and might. I was the consistent damage dealer that puts boss enemies down in about 10 turns and hordes down in one. So we decided to stop a war for a bit between fantasy, China slash Japan and sort of Rome, despite both being dicks. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> because we wanted them to unite and smash a wizard that interrupted our sleep with eldritch monsters attacking our tower. So posing as a peerless swordsman rather than a godbind, I went around fantasy China's capital city until I found their martial heroes, people who know magic kung fu, and then challenged them to beat the shit out of me so I can beat them, then get an audience with the regent. The rest of the party politicked or tricked their way into an audience, while I just turn up covered in cuts, burns, water and blood when the regent is saying he would consider calling a ceasefire if we help deal with a shapeshifter problem. So then immediately one of my companions uses his gift and calmly informs us that of the eight elite guards in the room, all of them, plus four servants, were shapeshifters, who in turn realised the jig was up and leapt to slay the regent. Summoning my swords to me, I spent all of my efforts to cut down seven of the guard shapeshifters, in turn, while the rest of the party handled four, and the regent showed off his own mystic kung fu and slew the last. It was pretty fun to demonstrate the power of a godbind whose whole purpose is beating the fuck out of people. And the last one, just to round off this video, fuck off Neckbeardian. <laughs> <laughs> Little do they know that saying Neckbeardian in the tags actually gives us good threads. Um, yeah, <laughs> they know which even, ones we want. <laughs> like, I'm not even joking, it does help sometimes. Anytime, like Sometimes I just search in Neckbeardia on and uh, the literally search. there's like 20 posts of fuck off Nightmare. Yeah. fuck off I'm like random ass threads I was like hey this could actually make a good this video could actually, good, thank this could make a good thank you <laughs> um, but no a lot of people believe that we actually create a lot of these threads we don't we don't we I... actually don't so boys hope you enjoyed that one and um, we did say we were going to do it also, some good news. Um, this coming! Do, 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 this Sunday! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a shit one. But yeah, this Sunday we'll be doing the next part of The Flesh Prince, The Guy Who Looked More. So look forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. I, so haven't, I. Got, I haven't got the thread yet. And for I'm, everybody asking for Lark Camp, um, we were in the middle of recording it and then we found out that this guy's doing the cup bear one so we Sorry, were like no, no we'll we don't like doing more than one big long multi yeah, at a time it, it, it takes it, it, like we just get derailed too easy and then it means you guys are waiting weeks and weeks for, for the, the next, next part, part and the next part and like, so, you know, no one could be arched waiting weeks for the next part you know what I mean so at we'll just do, do one at the time basis. we'll see where this guy's going with this story and if he trails off after this one, then we might start LARP camp. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how just, often he uploads. Yeah, you know how it, you know how it is. But look, I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>